Hi, I'm Ed Musio, CEO of Group Harmonics. I'm going to tell you about seven step problem solving. When your shoe's untied, what do you do? If you're like me, you bend over and tie it. Simple problem, simple solution. What if the problem's not so simple? What if your customer service center is overwhelmed with calls? Well, you might say, simple problem, simple solution. We'll implement some training. They could take the calls faster and catch up. Of course, the training takes them off the floor. Now you have a coverage problem. You can solve that by improving some overtime. But of course, the overtime creates a budget problem. When you treat a complex problem like a simple one, you're likely to get caught in a loop where every solution creates another problem. To avoid that, Dr. Shoji Shiba of the Center for Quality of Management defined what he called seven-step problem solving, or seven steps to solve your problem in a way that will benefit the whole organization as thoroughly as possible. The first step is definition. Definition asks the question, what is the problem really? So let's take our example of the customer service center. Is the problem the number of calls? Is the problem how long the calls are taking? Is the problem something about the content of the calls? What is the real problem? Until you know that, you can't go any further. Now let's say in this case we decide actually the problem is the number of calls. There seem to be more calls than there used to be. Now we move to step two. Step two is data collection. Data collection answers the question of what is going on. So if we're thinking about number of calls, let's look at a graph. Let's look at number of calls over time. Maybe we determine that yes, in fact, somewhere around June of last year, the number of calls went up. Now we have some data. Now we can move to step three. Step three is cause analysis. Cause analysis, of course, answers the question of why? What's going on here? So we might go back up to this data and we might say, you know what, it turns out right at this same time we had a new product introduced, started shipping to the customer, and a lot of the calls are about that product. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're ready for step four. Step four is solution planning and implementation. Now that's a lot of work in one line of writing. This can take quite some time to plan a solution well and to implement it. But the good news is you've done your homework. You know you're working on the right thing, so it's worth the effort. Now, once you've planned and implemented the solution, let's say in our case, we figured out we want to ship a new product checklist. Product that goes out, we're going to send the customer the top five things they should do first. Maybe we think that'll help them stop having to call for help. But we're not going to stop there. We're going to do that for a while, and then we're going to move to step five. Step five is evaluation of effects. The question here is, did it work? So maybe we do our new product checklist for a few months, and then we go back to the data, and we look at it again, and we say, did it go down? If it didn't, if the calls got, went up again, back to the drawing board. But if we got the result we wanted, if our solution worked, we're still not done. Then we move to step six. Step six is standardization. The idea of standardization is we've gone through a lot of work to get the solution. Let's see how widely we can use it in the organization. So can we use it with other products, new ones that release from now on or old ones? Can we use it internally with other departments? Can we leverage it with partners somehow? Anything we can do to widely adopt the learning that we've worked so hard to get. After standardization, we're still not done. There's one more step, and that's step seven, evaluation of the process. Again, the idea here is to learn something based on the work we've done. When we started out, there were probably one or two people that knew this was a problem. But over time, putting the solution in place certainly took a group. We get this group together one more time, and we ask the question, how did we do at solving this problem? What did we do well? What were the positives that we should repeat next time? What did we do poorly? What should we do differently next time? We take these learnings, and we take them forward with us so that the next time we have a problem to solve, we're that much better at doing it. So the next time you have a problem to solve, if it's a complex problem, don't get caught in the loop where every solution is a new problem. Instead, take the time to do seven-step problem solving. First, define the problem, collect your data, and analyze the cause. That way, you make sure you solve the right problem. After you've done your solution, evaluate its effects, and if it worked, standardize as widely as you can, and evaluate your process to learn for next time. You'll be more likely to come up with a solution that helps the company, helps the problem, and solves it once and for all.